Okay. So, hello everybody. My name is Małgorzata Hanańczyk and I will uh, try to say in a few words what is happening with DarkSight 20K. Uh, so, so, what is uh, beautiful news is that the Argon community is coming together. It is already happening and the Global Argon Dark Matter collaboration has been formed. So, all the smaller scale experiments like DarkSight 50, uh, deep in snow, mini clean, and IRDM. They came together in terms of know how, people force, and we are together working to build the next huge experiment, Dark Side 20K. It will be located in Gran Sasso, in underground lab in Italy. It will have 20 tons of fiducial volume of underground argon. And it is starting, it will, the construction will start this year. So what is the goal? The goal is to detect WIMP dark matter if it exists or push the limit down to the neutrino floor. And we will use the two-phase argon time projection chamber. And what is important, we really know our technology. We can push the background very, very, to the very, very low levels. So we claim that we will be background free, of, uh, that we use the background free operation, both from neutrons and the gammas. So uh, this is the sensitivity plot, the projection of the, the, the expected sensitivity for dark side program, which is in these lines. Uh, this is showing a different uh, assumption about the exposure. So if you run for five years on 10 years, we can, go even lower and this is with the uh, together with the this is showing the xenon program uh, so we are really hoping <laughs> but a lot that we really are very close to the uh, to the neutrino floor so how we will do that so it was already said yesterday but the liqu liquid argon time projection chamber uh, Use, uh, the signal we, we want to observe is the uh, heavy particles scattering on the argon nuclei, uh, producing, so two, two things happen in argon in this moment. So we have the fast scintillation signal, which we observe as S1, and ionization. And the electrons, we drift in the electric field, then extract them to the gas phase, then the electroluminescence happens and we have the second signal. This one is sensitive to the kind of the particle which, uh, which caused it. So we can distinguish between electrons and neutrons or uh, nuclear recoils. And this one is giving us the time of the drift. So we have the precise 3D reconstruction of the event. So uh, this, was, uh, this is the small scale 50, 50 kilograms of Argon. And we are now moving into huge experiment. <laughs> uh, this is the whole uh, whole structure which will be uh, enclosed in the whole sea in the uh, Grand Sasso lab. Uh, we use the cryostat, which is quite innovative because uh, this is the same technology as now is used in the neutrino uh, neutrino experiment protodune. And uh, so we are ready to start, actually. This slide is to show that we are ready to start uh, to build this, uh, this apparatus. So what is the, uh, what is the innovation in dark side 20K? So at first, so because we want to reduce the background maximally, we are getting rid of any unnecessary elements. So we do not have the water tank, we do not have any of this. We use the uh, membrane cryostat, not stainless steel, and we use argon as a primary veto, and the inside detector, the, actually the heart of the detector, is the titanium vessel, which enclosed the underground argon. So the, uh, so the expensive argon, which is uh, necessary uh, to go down with the limit we expect. We also use the active veto, active neutron veto, uh, which is enclosed, which is 
integrated into the TPC structure. So the TPC is made out of acrylic, and the acrylic is gadolinium loaded. So the neutron veto and the structure of the TPC itself is integrated into one thing. And then we have the photo, photo sensors to, reach, to, uh, to see the light signals you want to see. And this is also the long R&D project, uh, which is now finished, and I will talk about it a little bit more also. Okay, so the underground argon. Uh, it's actually a huge side project of dark side, but it is necessary. I, because underground argon is not happening just like that. So we need to dig it out. So we need to have the contracts with the proper companies in the United States to, to have proper amount of argon, which is coming from underground wells. And this, this is not trivial, but we, are, we think we are able to do that. Then we have the additional distillation column, which is huge structure, which is uh, currently being built in the Sardinia in Italy. And what is maybe important to state that it is fully founded by the local funds from the community. So the Sardinia is actually building for us huge industrial structure to further uh, purify and do the isotope separation for our argon. And from this place, the argon will be shipped to Canfranc, to Spain, to do the quality check, quality control, if the argon is really the quality we expect it to be. And IRDM was changed into the quality control structure with a small DART detector which is a low background single phase argon detector to check the argon 39 depletion factor. Yes, so let's assume we have the argon. And the other project was the, which was really necessary and big effort to build from scratch is the photosensors. Because as we are getting rid of the, of the glass photo, photo tubes, CIPMs do not like to be put into the cryogenic conditions. So there is a lot of problems with the signal to noise ratio, with the magnification and so on in, inside, the, inside the cryostat. So, but we came up after a few years of, of uh, R&D with a very nice compact design of uh, silicon PMs, which are actually for si silicon PMs, they are large, they are five by five centimeters. We are uh, integrating them into the photo detection module. And four of these photo detection modules are put together into one single readout channel. And this way we can reduce the noise and keep the fast uh, readouts, uh, fast readout. So this is our new, let's say, photo multiplier. We called it PDM, uh, PDU, sorry, it's a unit photo detection unit. And we are starting the mass production of the silicon PMs, and then in, in a surgery in, uh, in the laboratory, it will be the PDMs will be produced. Okay, what is the most important part for now for our background free operation is the background mitigation strategies. So we are using the underground argon to reduce the argon 39, and it is really uh, 100, uh, 1040 hundreds times lower the contam contamination than in the atmospheric standard argon. Then we use the pulse shape, pulse, pulse shape discrimination technique. As I said, the S1 signal, we can, it differs if it is coming from the electron recoil or nuclear, nuclear recoil. And we have a very powerful tool to reject completely the electron recoil. Uh, so this is actually not a problem for us. It's not, uh, it's not somewhere close here that we can make a mistake. It really is very well separated background. So we can do this very, very well. Uh, so the argon 39 is actually giving the death time for the detector. It will saturate the detector. So it is, uh, so we really get, need to get rid of it. 
but it is not a problem in terms of rejecting the electron recoil type of background. Uh, the other huge, huge uh, thing which is uh, being done on the dark side is to re reduce the neutron background from alpha N reactions. So we have the contaminants from uranium and thorium in all the materials, and they can uh, produce neutrons inside the detector. This is a big problem. Of course, we are talking about very, very low activities. When we are, talking with, we are, when we are speaking with the providers of the materials, they are saying, oh, we don't have any, this is clean material, there is no radioactivity in it. But of course, it's not a case for us. We need to go very, very low uh, with, the, with this. Uh. So we do the campaign to measure each single material, each cable, each screw, each part of acrylic uh, with three, different, with three different, different techniques because we cannot assume that the contaminants are in a secular equilibrium because we know that it is not always the case. And I think it's the only experiment which is doing this at this precise, at this level of precision. And here is the example, the Arlon, which is used for the electronic boards. And so sta in standard way, we will measure only the uranium uh, 238. But if we measure the farther, farther parts of the chain, we see that the polonium, that the polonium 2010, is actually giving the highest contribution. And normally we will skip that, but we are taking that into account. So knowing that, we can simulate the expected neutron background and, uh, and if we can use this material or not. So the, finally, the neutron background is mitigated by the fantastic idea of integrating the neutron veto into the acrylic structure of the TPC. And this was also our R&D project, which uh, uh, it was a group in DarkSight who developed the strategy how to, the, how to, in, how to uh, dissolve the uh, gadolinium in a uniform way in the acrylic, and it is working. It is, the procedure is uh, decided to, that it is well, uh, good to be used. Uh, okay, and this can reduce the nuclear recoil background by, by a further factor of 10. So you are really, really knowing our backgrounds. Uh, okay, so dark sides, just to sum up, it's hard to talk about the detector which is only to be constructed. So there is not much to, to, uh, much to discuss in terms of results. We always wait for results. But we are actually finishing the R&D phase. It is ready to, to be built. Uh, the whole sea is ready in terms of uh, in terms of uh, practice. I mean, the crane is being dismantled and so on. The parts are coming in. We are starting to build this thing, and the ground reduction uh, techniques are really well known and implemented. So the production of the CPMs are st are starting. Is starting. Uh, we have the whole chain of the underground argon procurement, so we hope it will be enough to, uh, to produce argon for our experiment. Okay, whole sea is ready, as I said, and we expect to start to take data in, in four years, so in 226. And that's not, it, not the whole thing, because we hope for the future, so we plan for the future even farther. And there is the Argo program, which probably will be held in Snow Lab if it will happen. It's the next size. It's the, we are going to the next level using 300 tons of underground argon. And then we're really deep into the neutrino floor, into the neutrino fog. There is also dark side low mass pro program, which is uh, starting now. So, we are really covering the, um, the neutrino floor with quite a nice, yeah, in quite a nice way. In, in a, uh, so, just let me say, it's, if, if WIMPs exist, we'll in, really in a few years we will know it, yes or not. Uh, 
Thank you. Uh, about cosmogenics. cosmogenics. Yes, of course. Um, I'm not talking about this because it's actually a quite known issue because the uh, cosmic muons, they cross the detector. But of course we can see that because they are come from outside so we can match the cosmic muon with the event inside. So this is the background we know very well. And uh, yes. But so, first reason is we go deep underground to reduce the cosmic muons, but then we can reject the events from the outside, which are from the inside. Thank you. Further questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. First of all, compliments is uh, quite impressive. Uh, more than a question, just a curiosity, and we are listed in slide five, mm -hmm. with a shaded area. I know you mentioned it, and I know I lost it. Oh. What's the virtual shaded area? Uh, the, uh, this shaded area is the, from the latest LZ results. So this, this exclusion for, I think, two weeks ago there was a new paper and it is from that. And uh, this is the exclusion for, the, for this model, yes. Uh, sorry. For, for, uh, from this model, this is the other paper. Ah, okay. This is the so it's a model? It's a model, yes. It is a model. Do we have time for one more quick question? Thank you so much, Your The innovations are really amazing. With the ARDM or dark side 50 detectors, are you putting together like an integrated test stand where, where all of these different new technologies are used together before the 20 k detector? I'm not sure if I understand. Uh, I guess uh, how many of the new things are being tested together before before the detector? Before the detector. Uh, okay, uh, the, um, it has happened. Okay, the designing phase is always difficult, and some I, and this is really nice to observe. Somehow, some how some ideas are coming from different uh, experiments with different. Uh, uh, experiences, yes. So the acrylic structure is coming from deep, uh, yes. The uh, the silicon PM is coming from dark side 50 because they were using before the cupid um, also. But there is no facility. We are actually testing. Par we are of course testing uh, um, uh, parts, but the design. Actually, we will see how it will work. Yes, this is all this, the the. There is the testing facility in, in CERN where the cry, 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 cryogenic structure has been tested. There is the testing uh, facility in Naples where the silicon PMs are being tested and so on. But the whole idea we will see, <laughs> yes, there is no facility to, to check it uh, in separate ways. Okay, thank you. We thank you very much. We move on to the next speaker. Thank you very much again.